Welcome back Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to another episode of Fixing Transformers. And in today's, we're going to take a look at Knights and Misconceptions. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Now the concept of Knights was implemented into the former Transformers cinematic universe when Age of Extinction came along, with Optimus being redesigned to look like a medieval knight, along with the addition of the Dinobots, who were redesigned to also look like knights. Transformers The Last Knight brings this concept further by introducing the Guardian Knights, protectors of the staff, who could all combine into Dragonstorm. Now though knights were a cool idea, they were never fully explained, just showing up and being part of the lore with no explanation whatsoever, along with adding huge lore to Optimus Prime's backstory that never gets brought up again. So with that in mind, I'm going to fully flesh out the knights and clear up any misconceptions about them. So with that, I highly recommend that you watch my Quintessa the Rogue Creator video, since it's a part one to this one. But if you already have, let's get into Knight's misconceptions. So the main issue on the table with the Knights is that there are two sets of them. As we know, Lockdown was tasked with getting the Knights, which I'll expand upon in my Who Sent Lockdown video. In the film, he states, it's taken centuries, but I've collected all the knights, but you. Now he says that he collected all the knights, but as we saw in Age of Extinction, no guardian knights appeared, just the Dinobots. Since if Lockdown did indeed collect all the knights, then Talisman Knight would have been captured and would have not shown up in Chicago along with the 12 Guardian Knights being captured as well, leading me to conclude that there are two sets of Knights, the Cybertronian Knights and the Guardian Knights. With that in mind, it all leads to one thing. The Cybertronian Knights were made sometime before the Guardian Knights, since it would explain why Lockdown had no Guardian Knights in his possession. Now, if you remember in my Quintessa video, I made the start of the story on how the Cybertronian Knights were created, and in this next section, I'm going to flesh out that story. And note that this short story is all but speculation. Sensing Quintessa's lust for power to become a goddess, the other creators decided that she had to be put down, believing that she would rule over Cybertron and mix species among it. With their one golden rule in jeopardy, they planned an assassination attempt on Quintessa. Now, if this sounds crazy to you, I'm basing this off of two concrete things in the Bayverse. The line that Lockdown says to Prime, All this species mixing with species. It upsets the cosmic balance. The creators, they don't like it. And Cybertron 2. Since Cybertron 2 is Cybertron recreated into Quintessa's vision. And to me, it looks like a techno-organic planet due to all the grass growing on it which wasn't previously there as we saw it in Transformers 2007 and Dark of the Moon, making it evident that Quintessa was either going to mix species or was going to make a new race of Transformer. Since if you remember, there was a lot of Beast Wars concept art for the last night, so maybe she was trying to reshape Cybertron into a techno-organic planet. But since the Bayverse is now over, we can only speculate. But now moving back on to the story, Quintessa eventually caught wind of the hit that was getting placed on her, and used her staff of power to create the first Cybertronian Knights, which were the Dinobots, massive Cybertronians that could turn into dinosaurs. Now if you're wondering how the Dinobots are Knights, first off they all look like Knights, and all of Quintessa's creations have a Knight aesthetic to them. But to really prove that they are Knights, Lockdown said that it took him centuries to capture all the knights. And, well, the only other characters that we see in the Knights Temenos were the Dinobots. And if there were any more knights, I highly doubt that Prime would just leave them behind in the ship, since they needed all the reinforcements they could get. With that said, that confirms that the Dinobots are Cybertronian knights. But now moving back on to the story, Quintessa was not done creating knights yet. She wanted to go all out, to make sure that the other creators would be destroyed. For this, she would give each of the seven Dinobots a rider. Now, the reason why there are seven Dinobots instead of the four that we saw in the film is because of the extra three were the cut Dinobots from Age of Extinction. 
those being Slash, Slog, and Snarl. Quintessa created these riders by granting life to seven unfinished Cybertronian warrior protoforms that she stole from the other creators. One such rider was Optimus Prime. And these riders would help guide, control, and tame the massive Dinobots, overall creating legendary warriors. Now you may be wondering, what am I basing this off of? And well, have you ever wondered why Optimus decided to ride Grimlock, with Grimlock being totally fine with it? Well, I think this can be an explanation for that. Since no other Transformer besides Prime would know how to effectively do a rider combo, Drift, Crosshairs, and Bumblebee would just follow suit, trying to imitate it. Another reason why I think this is the case is because when seeing how Optimus and Grimlock work together, there is almost a psychological connection between them. For example, take this shot here. Optimus grabbed onto Grimlock's head as Grimlock lowered it down. Grimlock then jumps to boost Prime onto the ledge, so he could kill the KSI drone. They both knew where to be at the right time, working together as a unit. And with how well they worked together in combat, it's evident that they had some connection with each other in the past. Hence why Prime was able to tame Grimlock so easily. Further proven when he addresses the Dinobots as legendary warriors. Legendary warriors. But moving back on to the story, Eventually, Quintessa unleashed her Cybertronian knights against the other creators, lying to them by saying that the other creators were evil beings who wanted to control the universe. With that said, a epic battle took place. Some creators got killed in the battle, and the rest were sent into exile when the Cybertronian knights overpowered them. Snarl, Slog, and Slash were killed in the battle, and six riders perished leaving Optimus to be the last rider. With a victory in their pocket, they gave Quintessa the news. Upon hearing that they were successful, Quintessa would reward her creations by tasking them to protect Cybertron from any threat that may come its way. Unicron being one of them. As a token of her appreciation, she would build them the Knights Temenos so they could explore the galaxy. Remember this ship, Prime. Built for all you knights, you great crusaders, to explore the universe. And with that, that's really all that we know about the Cybertronian Knights. One evident thing though is that Lockdown said that it took him centuries to capture all the knights. Meaning at one point the knights must have split up. Likely sometime after Cybertron fell. We know that Optimus and the Dinobots eventually went back to Cybertron before the Civil War, since Optimus is the Autobot leader, and Slug has an Autobot logo on his head, meaning that the Dinobots joined forces with the Autobots during the war. So I think our best answer would be, once the Autobot Decepticon Civil War started, the Cybertronian Knights were disbanded to fight the war. And eventually, when Cybertron was destroyed, the Cybertronian Knights' goal of protecting Cybertron was failed, since Cybertron was now destroyed. Ultimately disbanding the Cybertronian Knights, with Optimus going to Earth, and the Dinobots splitting up and going their own separate ways, until Lockdown would bring them all back together again by capturing them. But I'll cover that more in my Who Sent Lockdown video. So with that said, that covers the Cybertronian Knights. But now let's move on to the Guardian Knights, also known as the Iacon Knights. So first off, let's figure out their timeline. Now though we do not know much about them, we can infer that Quintessa created them, along with the Guardian Knights' goal of protecting the staff. My power of creation, the staff, was stolen from me by my 12 Guardian Knights. They betrayed me and hid it on Earth. Protect the staff. The staff was buried with Merlin's body. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, it would mean the imminent destruction of everything we know and love. So now knowing that she is the creator of the Guardian Knights, why did Quintessa make them? Well, as I said earlier, after the Cybertronian Knights' victory over the other creators, Quintessa wanted to tie up loose ends and personally execute the creators that escaped. 
Over an unspecified amount of time, trying to hunt them down, she created the 12 Guardian Knights to help her in her quest of executing the other creators. Now from this point, we know that her 12 Guardian Knights rebelled against her, calling her the Great Deceiver. And though we do not know what the exact reason was, this is my best guess. After creating the Guardian Knights to kill the other creators, Quintessa went back to her base of operations to work on other projects, possibly plotting how to kill Unicron. But eventually, the Guardian Knights, after years of searching, found out where the creators were hiding, and proceeded on their mission to destroy them, believing them to be evil beings. But the creators got the upper hand on them, and instead of killing them, they sensed that the Guardian Knights were filled with rage, believing that Quintessa was the all-giving good, and them terrible evil beings that must be destroyed. The creators would then show their side of the story, and convince the Guardian Knights that they were not evil, and that they were deceived by Quintessa. The Knights, being convinced that Quintessa was the real villain, and learning from the creators that they were made by her staff of power, would decide to betray her and steal her staff, since it was the source of most of her power. Now taking refuge on Cybertron, they would establish the city of Iacon, and once the war destroyed their home, they crash-landed on Earth, where they would eventually give the staff to Merlin, lining us up with the events of the last night. Now you may be wondering, what evidence points them going to Cybertron? And, well, two lines from The Last Knight support this claim. The first one being that Optimus knows about the Guardian Knights. You chose the wrong side. The Guardian Knights are going to kill me. And the other one being that Daytrader knows about the Guardian Knights' talisman. Where'd you get that piece of junk? A Knights of Iacon talisman in this dump? It's not real. So with that said, we can conclude that they went to Cybertron. This can be further backed up when Merlin talks about Cybertron's downfall, and when Sir Edmund Burden talks about the 12 Guardian Knights. I know your world was destroyed. I'm sorry. But please don't let ours die too. Behind them sat the 12 who came from Cybertron. So this concludes that the Guardian Knights must have left Cybertron once it was destroyed. I don't think that they fought in the war due to them having no faction logos, but merely protected the city of Iacon, since that was where the staff was hidden. Hence why the Autobots and Decepticons did not use it during the war, since they did not know it existed. But if they did, they would have certainly used it as the Allspark's replacement. As for if they founded the city of Iacon, that is a guess on my part. Since Daytrader calls them the Knights of Iacon, and in many other continuities, the Autobots had control of Iacon City, but since the staff was never brought up, leaning towards the fact that the Autobots did not know it existed, I would say that the Autobots did not found Iacon, and did not have control of the city, hence why they did not know about the staff. Now the last piece of the Guardian Knights' timeline is sometime after Merlin died, he was buried in the underwater ship with Quintessa's staff. And the Guardian Knights went into stasis in the ship to protect it. And with that, that's everything about the Cybertronian Knights and the Guardian Knights. But now let's move on to the misconceptions portion of the video, with the first question being... Why was Optimus' first instinct upon seeing Quintessa was to kill her? And I think the reason behind this is that sometime after they made their way to Cybertron, the Guardian Knights informed the Cybertronian Knights about Quintessa's true motive, learning that they have been deceived and forced to do her bidding. Now this would definitely put Prime into a rage all those years later, and it would not help when seeing his planet completely different than the way it was before. The next question is, how many Guardian Knights are there? Now you may think that there are 12, but this would be incorrect. Since in this scene, we see a total of 11 Guardian Knights, minus the 12th one being Stormrange, who was off screen. Now if you remember, two other Knights were killed by Prime, Talisman Knight bled out, and Skulltron most likely fell to his death not to mention the many other knights that we see in stasis in the underwater ship. Guys, the meters are freaking. 
I got thermals everywhere. These things, they, they could still be alive. So with that in mind, clearly there are more than 12 knights. So how is this possible? Well, if you remember, Quintessa created the knights with her staff of power, and the knights stole that staff and had it in their possession. I think that they started to expand their numbers on Earth, and here is why. We learn from Sir Edmund Burden that when the Guardian Knights came to Earth, there were only 12. And behind them sat the 12 who came from Cybertron, 12 alien knights who saw in Camelot what the human race could be at its finest. Stormrange, which I believe to be the leader of the Guardian Knights, tells Merlin that a great evil will come for the staff. Look at this staff. One day a great evil will come for it. So with the Guardian Knights knowing of the threat of Quintessa, they would use her staff to make more knights, to make sure once the Mad Goddess came back, that they would have a small army to fend her off. Hence why we see more than 12 knights. The next question is, how many knights does it take to form Dragonstorm? And though you may think it's 12, that's actually not the case, since it varies and here is why. When Stormrange gave the staff to Merlin and said that the dragon is his to command, Stormrange did not combine with the other knights to form Dragonstorm. But later in the film, he does combine with the other knights. And in this shot, there's only seven knights. And it's unclear where the other five were at during this time, since they were present during the judgment scene. But in conclusion, I think it's safe to say that a minimum of seven knights is required to form Dragonstorm. The next question is, how did Optimus get the talisman logo on his sword? And, well, I do not have a concrete explanation for this one. Since when he gets the sword for the first time, the logo is not there. The best explanation that I can come up with is that upon remembering what the Guardian Knight said about Quintessa, and realizing that there was a chance he may meet her once again, he put their logo on his sword to remember who he was, and to not be deceived once again. He would do this by transforming the hilt of the sword to have that logo on it. Now Transformers can change how they look like with ease. For example, when Prime pulls out the sword, he changed how his arms looked to have a more night aesthetic. The next question is, what happened to the talisman? And well, after it turned into Excalibur, we never saw it again. There was a scene where Kay drops it, but it got deleted. I would assume one of the Guardian Knights picked it up after Kay dropped it, since it is a significant part of their culture, and probably transformed it back into the talisman. The next question is, why was Talisman Knight not with the other knights? And well, the reason for that is quite simple. Talisman Knight's job was to choose one last night before the struggle to save the world would begin. But when he was shot down by the TRF, he was unable to complete his mission. But when he saw Kay's compassion as a sign, he knew that he was worthy of a knight's honor, presenting the talisman to him. Now legend held that one last knight would someday be chosen, and the struggles to save the world would begin. It would appear, Mr. Cade, that that last night is you. The next question is what does Say Glass Nay Tomne mean? And well, Sir Edmund Burden actually explains it. Say Glass Nay Tomne. What does it mean? With your dying breath, protect the staff. And the final question is why did Lennox think the Guardian Knights were older than Optimus? I've never seen one like it, General. This one's older, older than Optimus Prime. Well, the reason for that is, since like he said in the clip, the knight does look older than Prime. So as someone looking at the knights for the first time, it's easy to mistake them being older than Optimus, since Prime is more modern looking, while the knights are more medieval. And just like that, that was Knight's Misconceptions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. Without you guys, trans theories would not be where it is today. So thank you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider dropping a like because it will help the channel a lot. With that said, hit that outro.